Welcome back to Mayo Clinic Radio. I'm Dr. Tom Shives. And I'm Tracy McRae. As people search for ways to eat healthier and lose weight, juicing, sometimes called a juice cleanse or a detox, (laughs) it's gained popularity. (laughs) And juicing is a term that refers to combining fruits and or vegetables in a juicer or a juicing machine, and you grind that stuff all up into something you can actually drink. (laughs) While juicing may help you get the five to nine recommended servings of fruits and vegetables each day, that alone is not a balanced diet, and I don't think that that even really counts. We'll talk to Kate about that. Here to discuss the benefits and drawbacks of juicing is Mayo Clinic dietitian, and I should say a lot of other topics as well, Mayo Clinic dietitian Kate Zaratsky. Welcome back to the program, Kate. Thanks for having me. <laughs> that's not really, well, I just have to say, that's not really juicing. Uh, when you, you can't count those towards your fruits and vegetables each day if you're not eating them. Or can you? Well, it counts, but you're, you're right. There's there's that but after it. Mm-hmm. And I think when we talk about juicing, we are missing the whole food. And there's something to be said for the whole food. You know, it's always good to have a dietitian on the program. And, and I hate to interrupt this conversation about juicing. And I want to get back to it. But what does a dietitian normally have for breakfast? <laughs> yeah, what would you have for breakfast today? Uh, Dr. Shives and Tracy, I had <laughs> pineapple and my special hot chocolate. Tell us about that hot chocolate. So my hot cocoa, and everyone who knows me knows that I drink my hot cocoa year-round. Mm-hmm. It is milk with cocoa powder. Mm-hmm. with a and little. That, that's it? And, and so I don't add any sugar, but just for a little bit of sweetness, a little whipped cream, and a few mini chips, mini chocolate <laughs> chips on the top. I love it. Mm-hmm. What did we call the dietitian's Dish delight? delight. Yep. Dietitian's delight. <laughs> I just wondered, you know, you know, at least you came clean. I'm just yeah. saying that hot chocolate and pineapple is a strange combination, but I'm not against trying it, so I will. Well, and it was the fruit that I had available in my refrigerator at the end of the week. Okay, and so let's then circle back to that pineapple. What if you would have thrown that pineapple into a blender with a banana and a couple of ice cubes? Is it as good to eat your drink your pineapple as it is to eat your pineapple? Well, if you're blending it and eating the whole foods, Mm -hmm. I think there's more benefit there than to say if I were to extract some of the fiber out because you do want to have that fiber. Beyond that, there are some arguments and around eating whole foods and chewing them and maybe the satisfaction you get out of chewing food. And then there's another argument to say, well, when you eat the whole food and you're chewing it, then your body does have to do a little work to digest it. So you have kind of a, a pro and a con there. If it's broken down, some mm-hmm. argue, well, you will absorb more nutrients where other people say, well, maybe you should eat more whole foods because... Just like every other muscle in your body, your gut needs a little workout, too. Well, and it's kind of a catch-all term because uh, juicing can mean you put all of these fruits and vegetables in a juicer, and then it's extract, the juice is extracted out, and there's all of this pulp, fibery stuff left behind. Or, Dr. Shives, you could put it all in a blender and just, it's got to be a really strong blender, Mm -hmm. and just blend it up like crazy. And there's nothing left behind. It all goes into a glass. That has to be better than just juicing, correct? Right. That would be the preferred method. Okay. Look, so you mean when you juice, you lose the fiber? The fiber is kind of a sediment at the bottom and you don't drink that? Yeah, it's two different... No, it's not even in the glass. If you do juicing... You, it's still left behind in the machine. You put it through the machine and then all that fiber and pulp and stuff is left behind. Whereas this is... I I put everything in a blender Mm -hmm. and just whip it up. My kid even (laughs) puts carrots in there. And if you've got a really strong blender, you can, he likes them because they're sweet. It's weird. Well, and I think there, and I think that's a really good point because Mm -hmm. there are some vegetables that add some sweetness. Mm -hmm. So if, in in depending what your taste preferences are, if, you know, some people want to eat more greens or keep the calorie content of their smoothies down. Mm -hmm. So adding vegetables is a nice way, but some people don't necessarily like the bitter of the greens or some of the vegetables. So pairing that with a sweeter fruit like pineapple Mm -hmm. is a really a nice trick. Carrot apple is pretty good. Mm -hmm. He came up with that on his own. It's a difference, Shives. Yeah. Oh, yeah, okay. <laughs> is there an ideal combination of fruits and vegetables? I mean, can you make such a thing? Can you make an, an ideal concoction? Or does it really matter? 
Well, and I think the ideal would be in in maybe the eye of the beholder um, and maybe what their their needs are. Now, if somebody, say, were trying to get more iron in their diet I'm, and absorb more iron, I might sure. say with your leafy greens, combine it with something that's going to have more vitamin C like citrus or the pineapple. Um, that's a nice combination because you have the vitamin C helping some of the iron be absorbed from that. Isn't uh, spinach and strawberries together don't uh, individually they're great foods but when you put them together don't they work in that way somehow yes so the, yeah. the strawberries would have uh, would be a very good source of vitamin c and so they would help with some of that see i only know enough to kind of make a recipe up i don't even know why i'm doing it but i know if i'm making strawberries i got to put some spinach in there too to double down what i'm making mm -hmm. it's a good combination so does juicing help you lose weight i mean do you, do you tend to get full when you do this and and eat less uh, i mean is it a weight loss sort of thing or no, no i don't it's do it for healthy. weight loss i just do it because it tastes good it's a snack in the middle of the afternoon and i work at home and so i could go crazy on my snack <laughs> <laughs> but a, a smoothie is a good snack well and i think it it probably depends how it's made and and so like anything what goes into it and the portion matter and so if it were, say, just just the juice, the pulp extracted, in, you could drink a, a lot of juice mm -hmm. and a lot of calories if there were many, many fruits in there. Now, granted, it's nutritious, but um, there it, it is a significant amount of calories. Um, and even if it were a whole food smoothie, there is a chance that it could be extra calories for you. And so you just want to keep that in mind. And that's where some people are finding the combination of the fruit and the vegetables lower the, the calorie content of the overall beverage. Um, and then I think just the idea of just keeping the keeping the portion in check, you might want to just share it with somebody. Mm -hmm. So some of the recipes actually call for a little bit of added sugar, but that's not a good idea, is it? I don't, and it, wherever we can cut out added sugar in our diet is probably a good idea because we're eating far too much of it. So any chance you can cut back or cut it out is a good idea. And with the natural sweetness of fruit and some vegetables, it's probably not necessary to add it. The secret is an avocado, which makes them really, really smooth. Sounds mm -hmm. weird. Can't yeah. taste avocado when you do it. Or what is easier is really ripe bananas because that makes it sweeter and it makes it really smooth. Mm -hmm. So I've got so many frozen bananas in my freezer right now. Too many. Uh, I should have you, a smoothie party and you can come over. Are you really convinced, though, that this is better than a chocolate for a snack? <laughs> <laughs> well, I sometimes put some chocolate powder <laughs> in my smoothie, but that's just a different deal. Yeah, that's starting to make more sense to me <laughs> Okay, now. very that good. That I could come over for. <laughs> All right, so let's talk about uh, these beans, because uh, Dr. Shives has got a picture of beans behind him, and if you're not watching us on YouTube, here's a reason to go. There's a giant photo of a bean salad behind Dr. Shives it is making me really hungry but as now bean salad is not good for me what's what's wrong with beans bean salad is still good for you oh good <laughs> tell me what less lecithins lectins what is that lectins oh, yeah. lectins. Oh. what does that mean so lectins are a protein found in plants it's a natural protein that's found in plants it actually acts as a protective mechanism for the plant to ward off disease and such um and, and lectins are something that, um, if we were to eat them, potentially if we were to eat too many of them, um, it could cause a problem. But really, the, um, it's not a problem because when we eat beans, especially, or other vegetables that maybe have a higher content of lectins, often those types of foods are cooked. And so, um, like any protein that's exposed to heat, it's denatured or broken down. And so the lectin is broken down and it's not an issue. We're going to take a short break. When we come back, we'll switch gears and talk about lectins. Have you ever heard of them? Some are calling it the new gluten, Dr. Shives. Yeah, I'm not sure. <laughs> Welcome back to Mayo Clinic Radio. I'm Dr. Tom Shives. And I'm Tracy McCray. All right. Well, we've talked about juicing. You're a juicer. Kate <laughs> likes juicing. No, I'm not a juicer. You're, oh, you're I'm a, a smoothie sm maker. I've oh. never made a juice in my life. Okay, so that's the I. answer to the question, <laughs> the difference between blending and extraction. That's right. right. You, exactly. You take the whole thing so you get the <laughs> that's fiber. Right. You get everything. <laughs> hey, you All know right, what? In celebration of our 200th station, which we have not had that party, we have had 200 stations that show this or that play this radio program. I'll make you smoothies. All right. I'll That's bring the we'll chocolate. Do. You can right. a little chocolate in there and I'll come. Kate, is uh, are beans the new gluten? 
lectins? Are they the new gluten? Is that for real? Well, if you go on the internet, you might think so. <laughs> <laughs> and truth be told, both gluten and um, lectins are a protein found naturally in um, in plants. And so in far, as far as lectins go, do I think there's something people need to avoid? I don't. Um, un- unless someone truly thinks they have a sensitivity to certain foods like any i you know we want to respect that and we would want to be kind of systematic about our approach to removing foods from one's diet well there are a lot of people though who think that lectins are a problem and there is a a best-selling book on uh, i saw it on amazon i looked it up when you started talking about when i knew we were going to talk about lectins because i'd never heard of them (laughs) and it's called the plant paradox the hidden dangers in healthy foods that cause (laughs) disease and weight gain and it's by a a cardiovascular surgeon okay um and he says you got to avoid these lectins they're they're bad for you (laughs) And, it, and he's it, doing this to sell a book? In the review okay, of the book, right. it says the simple and daunting fact is lectins are everywhere. Thankfully, Dr. Gundry offers simple hacks we easily can employ to avoid them, including peel your veggies. Oh. You peel your veggies? Hmm. You ever heard of that? I, I would recommend not doing it if you don't have to. All right. Shop for fruit in season. I guess that makes sense because he says that uh, fruit, when it's not... Uh, completely ripe can, it contains uh, uh, more lectins, and you want to avoid those. And swap your brown rice for your white rice. I guess that's probably okay, huh? Well, and if I would say if someone truly doesn't think they have an issue or a sensitivity to mm-hmm. lectins again, which I don't know that we can quantify if anyone would. Mm-hmm. Um, in fact, having brown rice, having a whole grain would actually be preferred unless you have a reason um, and hopefully a medical reason not to to have that. So we, would, in, unless indicated otherwise, I would say people should have their whole grains. Um, so I would prefer that people would eat their brown rice over their white rice most of the time. You um, didn't buy this book, did you? No, I didn't, but there's all <laughs> sorts of cookbooks to, uh, that will avoid of lectins course. in your diet. Well, it sounds uh, actually like it's impossible, but they're out there. <laughs> And this Kelly Clarkson says, I read this book. It worked. Is is she a singer, right? She She said, my autoimmune disease is gone, and I am 37 pounds lighter because of she's been on this low-lectin diet. It's another fad, a type of fad diet, that if you limit some foods that you eat, you're going to lose weight. Right, and I I think if... if you are to look if if you were to look this up and look mm-hmm. at some it like many fad diets it is restrictive in nature mm-hmm. and so there are many foods that are eliminated and so when you start eliminating many foods um, the likelihood of someone losing weight is you know is probable and, mm-hmm. and likely to happen and so and oftentimes when people lose weight and uh, their their body responds differently. They do feel better. Uh, so that said, a lot of the foods that are suggested that be eliminated in this um, lectin-free diet uh, are very healthy and nutritious foods and actually are foods that are thought to be anti-inflammatory and, and that it's kind of a counter argument mm-hmm. that, that they some will say they're inflammatory but there's other substances in that food that are actually known to be anti-inflammatory. Basically it's a fad. I, I would say it's a fad. And yes. you don't think there's any uh, good evidence to suggest that you ought to be on a low lactin, low lectin diet? No, I don't think anyone should be on a, a low lectin diet Absolutely, because I, I, don't, I don't think it's possible to eliminate lectins because they're in all plants, and we want people to eat plants. Now, within the plant family, mm-hmm. there are certain types of plants that people may have sensitivities to, mm-hmm. and I think if that's the case, again, we'd probably want to take a systematic approach to looking at one's diet and, and trying to eliminate foods um, in a way that doesn't eliminate all and so and there would be a reintroduction of foods because we don't want people to be on overly restricted diets um, because that's not um, an easy way to live life right. in in terms of a long-term healthy diet and so we want to people to eat as, as many healthy foods as they can and to avoid the ones that truly give them problems and if you can tweak things but still eat a healthy diet and I mean go ahead and I'd say go ahead and try it if you want to try it but like you said you can't 
that's a hard thing to eliminate all the way around. Right, right. And I think it, and it too, for some people, it, you know, just in terms of food sensitivities, it might just be how it, it might be how it's cooked. It might be the dose or mm-hmm. the amount that you eat at any one time. So oftentimes there's, there's a ways around to include foods, but maybe just within a reasonable way of doing it. All right. So now we have to talk about probiotics in our last few minutes. Because as long as we're dispelling myths, yeah, Well, let's you have a probiotics. friend who is afraid that she's going to die because of all the probiotics from what she heard on the news this morning. And so, again, when you talk about fads, um, people now, it's circling back around that probiotics are bad. Or is that what the message, message is? Well, and I think that the message is that it's an emerging science. And mm-hmm. I think as as more and more research is done in this area, we're, we're seeing maybe a study that is showing benefits, and then we may see a, a study that shows the opposite and, and, and does not show those benefits. And so I think there's much to be learned um, about uh, the gut microbiome, that's the, the bacteria that naturally live within us mm-hmm. and, and its role um, in our health and disease states. Mm-hmm. So I think more to come. Um, that said, when we talk about probiotics as being a dietitian, you know, I, I will bring the conversation back to food. Yeah. And, and You're there eating are, yogurt. And there's <laughs> foods that maybe naturally have some probiotics, and then there's foods that are considered prebiotics that may... Uh, help the set up the environment within your gut um, to be a healthier place to maybe promote uh, gut flora that may be health healthier beneficial. So the story that your friend heard this morning and um, that we're referring to, uh, there's taking the capsules, the pills that are labeled as probiotics. That's one thing, and then there's eating a serving of kombucha or or sauerkraut you know there's these different ways that probiotics are woven into our food Mm -hmm. and isn't that line getting blurred that we're talking about you don't want to eat the capsules and that some manufacturer is saying this is a probiotic right and i think when we step into that arena of Mm -hmm. taking a pro a probiotic or even having a drink recognizing that this is an unregulated industry and so you can say that you have this strain of of bacteria or this much of this bacteria but quite honestly we don't know that that's absolutely true and we can't say with certainty that that's the best thing or that's going to benefit you and I again we just I don't think we have that science yet and so I think it comes back to buyer beware Um, and there are some people that report that they feel very well when they take a probiotic capsule or that they may have a drink that contains a probiotic. Now, whether that's a true effect or if that's a placebo effect, right. we don't know. Um, I think if, it, if they're an otherwise healthy person, they can, they, could, they can probably practice that safely. But that's not to say that that's the case for everyone. All right, well, let me tell our listeners what we're referring to, and it's two reports that came out recently in the journal Cell, which is a peer-reviewed journal, by the way, and it says, quote, uh, cast further doubt on the benefits of the highly commercialized probiotic products. Because they are marketed as dietary supplements, not drugs, probiotics do not need to be approved by the FDA for claims that they prevent or treat any health conditions. And basically, these two studies said they did nothing. Most of the patients who took them, they all went they went in one end and came out the other. <laughs> and the other one, the concern that your friend referred to was the fact that if you have taken an antibiotic, it may actually take your gut longer to recover if you take pro- probiotics uh, versus letting Mother Nature have her way and mm. do it that way. And so, I think that's I, what yeah. brings us back to food. Yeah. I think that's exactly right. And, and eating nutritious foods like fruits and vegetables and whole grains – allow your body to have the the proper environment it in it can play with the ph or how the foods you know the fibers and and how things are digested there to set up an environment that's going to promote maybe a healthier flora all right juicing is good we decided that and it we it's <laughs> not, not extracting it's blending smoothies, smoothies. <laughs> not juicing all right smoothings are good um we've dispelled the myths about probiotics there's certainly some question about whether or not uh, the claims are true and lectins not probably not to worry about having too many <laughs> lectins in your diet. No. Kate Zaraski, Dietitian Mayo Clinic, thanks so much for being with us. Thank you.